Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to continue the series that I started with my last video. And we're going to go over some more YouTube builds that once again are built incorrectly as far as CNC controllers. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to try my best to show you how everything once is again, wired up on the board. plasma system, DIY, nothing shielded. We have bare cables here exposed. <clears throat> Left inside the system, he's got wire nuts he's using. Board. Board. So, for starters, you have this green cable here that goes and out. And what always baffles me with these videos, and this is the thing I'll never understand, is that if I did something the first time, I recognize my weakness in the sense that I've done it my first time. I would not go online and and sit there and promote what I've done the first time unless I've mastered it. Why would I do that? Because I recognize the fact that someone's going to look at my work and most likely try to imitate it or you know copy it to some degree. And if I did something wrong with electronics, it could be lethal. I just don't. I, I'm not understanding the logic behind these videos. To the wall. This is the main power. To the wall. This is the main power to the board, and this goes to the the power supply here. Um, that power supply then has another cable that jumpers over to the second power supply. Um, basically, just you have the Once power again, goes to two power supplies, which is completely unnecessary. A single power supply with the proper amount of amps is all that's required. China now does this because it's cheaper for them than to carry one power supply with the proper amount of amps. What he's actually done is increase the amount of EMI present in his enclosure because of the fact that he's running two power supplies redundantly. And then, of course, you know. I don't need to go into much detail with this. I think you guys get the picture of what we're working with here. Let's continue. Which is just a normal extension, um, extension cable. And that do not has belong the any enclosure, guys. None. If you see this online, this is done incorrectly. That bottom red light you is here, indicating cables, that you nothing is attached to ground. There's nothing here shielded. If it is shielded, it has no uh, drains going to ground at all. Have five volt power to the board, and then you also have power from here going over to here, which is the 24 volt power for the breakout board, and that's indicated as this green light here. This motor driver and this motor driver gives this motor driver so power. Got jumping daisy chain right here between power to his drives, which is once again not correct. Every driver manufacturer states that as well. And then same thing on this power supply. Uh, high frequency interference for the plasma cutter. Um, so. I mean, do First I really thing, need to explain that we've got a huge amount of wire nuts. I don't know what this is. Uh, again, I'll let you. I'll let you listen to his explanation of what he's done. I would say that if you are gonna be using your plasma cutter or your CNC plasma cutter for making money, for uh, you know, professional purpose. I would suggest go out there, get a CNC a plasma cutter that's built for CNC. They don't use high frequency start, so you won't have any problem. With your a guy telling you to go out and buy a certain component when his system is using metal tape to secure it, I would be very cautious of that. I don't think I need to say that. We see here he's using USB, which when you're using a plasma system is completely inadequate control because USB requires five volts for signal transmission. So if you don't believe me on that, here is the leader of making USB controllers, which is the UC100 from CNC Drive. This is Balasis, and he is a lead engineer over there, and he's explaining why uh, the UC100, which is their USB controller, will disconnect. I've done videos on this before, and you can read this. Just hit pause, and you can read everything that's going on here. Matter of fact, let me blow it up for you, and you can see exactly what we've got here. So again, 
you can check this out. I hope you hit pause if you're serious and you want to see why I do not recommend using USB, especially for plasma systems. Check this out. If you need stability, go with Ethernet. Animatronics. Now, with that say, one other point that he tried to make is about using a new version of a plasma system which does not release high frequency when it starts, meaning high frequency noise. Guys, let me explain something to you. The fact of the matter is you're pulling a lot of amps. Yes, he's correct. There are new plasma systems out that are designed for robotics use. That does not mean that you do not use the proper cable and grounding processes for safety and for EMI dissipation. You always do that. And I can tell you right now, Lincoln Electric is going to include one of the best quality units when you buy one of their commercial systems. However, they're still going to give you a system that is designed around using the proper grounding technique and proper cables. You have to use your head. You have to realize that a component is not going to solve all of your issues. Building and understanding what you're doing will. You're doing a little hobby thing in your garage, like me, and you are using a uh, low-budget plasma cutter that use high-frequency start. Then there's some things you need to do to protect your electronic cutter in this industry for CNC production. I do not know of one client of mine or for that matter potential client that would cut something out it come out great and them not try to profit off of it whether it's a small amount of profit because they only sell a small amount or a large amount of profit the fact of the matter is everybody in the genre of robotics expects when they're doing production to have accuracy this term is thrown around way too much and it's just inaccurate because nobody I know will cut something and it come out beautiful and then not say, wow, I can make money with this. It just doesn't happen. It's human nature. Okay, if not, it's, it's going to, the high frequency is going to wreak havoc on your electronics and it's not going to work right. Okay, so first thing, even though this is a plastic enclosure on the inside here, I put everything inside sheet metal. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's... Do not use this. Do not do this kind of work. Okay, guys, that wraps up this video. Stay tuned for the next video in the series. Thank you for your support. Take care.